was asking. Israel, he wants to know how can he kick masturbation in porno? Oh, man. It's just like any other type of addictions, whether it's nicotine, cigarette, or coffee, cocaine, mountains of cocaine. It's just hard. You got to want to stop and you got to change your environment. I think changing your environment definitely helps, you know, getting out of that space. And if it requires you literally having to leave the house to go for a walk or go, or go do something else, I'm still struggling with that shit, man. I got the cocoa butter right there. <laughs> I mean, I got three big ass monitors. What are you going to do? So it's hard. It's a struggle. It's real. I would just add this because, you know, I've struggled with addictions. It's subtle addictions. It's interesting. But what I found is that by fasting, fasting from food makes it easier to, to fast from everything. Yeah. So try fasting from food. Do like a three, four, seven day fast. <clears throat> and you'll find that, well, number one, your libido will start to drop a little bit, which is okay. It's not a bad thing. It comes back. But also because of your self-control associated with fasting, you'll, you're exercising your will. So instead of thinking of it in terms of like, I'm trying to push away masturbation, think of it in terms of, of I'm building self-will. So as you build your personal power of self-will, you'll have the capacity to use that for anything else. No matter what it is it's trying to do. So try fasting, try fasting, man. I believe fasting is magic, bro. Yeah, so it's about building the virtue and allowing the virtue to be the tool to help you get and do anything that you want, right? So like if you build courage, you can use that courage. Say if you build courage to do simple things like, you know, talking to a girl. You could then use that courage, the same courage, the same virtue in business, right? And other things. So it's about building the virtue. So when you build that, that virtue, I'm gonna use, I don't know if it's actually a virtue, but that virtue of stoicism, being unmoved. What's another word for that? Steadfast. You build that virtue of steadfastness through fasting, you could add that to your masturbation. You could add that to anything else, budgeting, your money, whatever. Boy. I work at Amazon four days straight and walk all day. I'm drained, what do I do? Well, what you're doing when you're working, walking all day is low intensity, high volume cardio. L-I-S-S. So if you think about it, that's on the far end of the spectrum. Let's call that left. Power lifting or even better, Olympic lifting far right because it's high intensity, short interval. If you're doing steady state all day long, that's cool, you don't need to do any cardio. When you go to the gym, keep it a short workout, 40 minutes, choose the three, three basic exercises or, or the four, according to my YouTube video, and keep it like high intensity, low volume, so like, Today with my bench press, I did six sets of three. So like five sets of three, or even three sets of five. I wouldn't try to burn yourself out with too much high volume bodybuilding stuff, but you could. And then also, I know I see what you Amazon guys do. Amazon guy comes around here all the time. Sip aminos throughout the day. I mean, make sure you stay nourished throughout the day if you want to be able to bust it up in the evening with your workout. Make sure you're getting plenty of rest. But you should be all right, because look, when I was in college, when I was in grad school, I worked as a mover, so I was moving furniture. So think about it, you're, you're an Amazon guy, you're moving little fucking boxes. I was moving dressers, and then I go to the gym afterwards, so you can do it. Golden Rich wants to be old and skinny. <laughs> I think I was foreshadowing my oldness too. When I'm old, not 40, something like 70, 80, yeah, I want to be thin, I want to be skinny. Be like Bruce Lee. That's what I'll do the Bruce Lee thing. I was trying it out. That's why I was 180, 68 pounds in that picture. I was trying out the Bruce Lee thing. I was doing Muay Thai. But I'll get there. I still think I have some more trophies to win. I thought I was done winning trophies. But I'm not done. I seem to strain my, strain my back often, and it's always at one exact spot, right next to my upper spine. Mm -hmm. So underneath that, sh that right shoulder blade, resulting in pain in the neck, arm, and shoulder. You're gonna, a lot like me right now, because I have a lot of shoulder instability here because of this bicep. And so the issue then becomes, this shoulder likes to hike up, the trap ends up pulling. So you gotta work a lot more of that, that scapular retraction thoracic extension, you know, e I've said it a lot of times. So things like what I'm doing right there, and notice when I do this, this is a great exercise for you to do. Notice when I do it, how I, I really try to drill my shoulders down and back. So I'm here, also prone cobras, 
anything that help you stabilize that right scapula. Also, external rotation. External rotation is coupled with thoracic extension. So if you notice, like I'm doing this exercise, boom, external rotation. Work that, work these, boom. But always with the neck long. Think, keep, think about keeping your, your shoulder away from your ear. Don't let that happen. Down. Kobe Shoot wants to know about prolonged fasting and the demons that appear. <laughs> the 36 hour fast, the night before competition, I faced old fears, anxieties, and worries. I couldn't sleep because I was scared as fuck. Yeah, those are the demons. And I call them demons, I call them demons, but if you wanna, if you wanna use like modern language, it's latent emotional and mental trauma. You know, when we eat and when we participate in these habitual patterns, a lot of time it's designed to, to numb us from our emotions, bad feelings, bad thoughts. And so when you don't have that crutch, that addiction, when you break the food, when you stop the food, number one, you, you feel miserable because you're going through a detox. That's where the miserable feeling comes from, not because you don't have nutrients. It's because your body actually gets to stop digesting and turn its attention towards cleansing and detox and rejuvenation, which oftentimes feels bad if you've been toxic for a lot of your life. But then, so it's that coupled with the fact that you're not habitually eating so all the things that you were numbing yourself from, hiding from, start to creep up. And a lot of them, like I said, are latent. They're like old, maybe lifetimes of trauma that we just never gave ourselves an opportunity to face. One of the things I started recognizing, which was really weird for me, was like jealousy around my wife. <laughs> and I'm like, we've been dating since we were 14 years old. We have four kids, she's not going anywhere. It, it's completely irrational, it's totally irrational. I couldn't put two to two together, have that make any sense. But I realized that it was like latent beta bullshit that I wasn't, I had never faced when I was 15, 16 years old, before I was blue, before I was red pill, you know? So I realized like I, I, was, I was regressive and I was having like fears and anxieties about things that I should have dealt with when I was a teenager, but because I'm, I have this perspective and hopefully you know, I'm, I'm sharing with you guys so you have that pers perspective too, you can look at the demons as they come up objectively and be like, huh, well, that's silly or that's strange. Uh -huh, I wonder what that's all about. The only thing you don't wanna do is attach to them. Don't believe them, don't believe the demons. Don't believe your thoughts, don't believe your emotions. Maintain objectivity with them, notice them, honor them, relate in a uh, distant way from them but don't believe them, they're demons. They're not good for you, they're not your friends.